right, we're going to begin our math lesson for today. Here is our success criteria. What goals are we working on today? Our learning target today is to compare two fractions with the same denominator by reasoning about the size based on the same whole. So today we're going to look at two fractions and we're going to compare them. Proceeding. Our fractions will have the same denominator. For example, three. We will compare these two fractions using our comparison symbols. Our symbols are greater than, less than, or equal to. Today we will compare these fractions by representing the fractions using models. All right, here is a video that explains what we're going to be doing today in our seesaw work. Today we're going to represent fractions using bar models. That means you need to know how to partition a model correctly to show each unit fraction. So let's focus our attention on this video to see how we're going to show our knowledge today. Grammarly does more than catch it. What's up third graders? Today's lesson is on using less than or greater than symbols to compare two fractions that have the same denominators. All right, let's get a crack. Here we have two thirds and one third. The first thing to do when comparing any fractions is to look at their denominators. So we do that and we see that they both have a denominator of three, which means both visual models will be made out of thirds. Now, two thirds has a numerator of two, so we're gonna shade in two of our thirds. One third has a numerator of one, so we'll shade in one of our thirds. Now, we can look at our shaded regions of our models and we can see that two thirds has a greater amount shaded in. And we also know that because it also has a numerator of two, which is greater than a numerator of one. So two thirds is greater than one third. Now to decide which symbol to use to compare these, think of it like an alligator that wants to eat a bigger fraction. So we'll use this symbol because it's eating side of two-thirds. So we would read this as two-thirds is greater than one-third. All right, let's try another one. Here we have four-sixths and six-sixths. Again, we always look at both denominators first, and we see that they both have six as a denominator, which means that both of our models can be made out of six. Four-sixths has a numerator of four, so that means we'll shade in four of our six. 6-6 six, six has a numerator of 6, so we'll shade in 6 of our 6. And now, we can already see that 6-6 six, six is greater because it has more shaded in, and also because its numerator is greater than 4. So we want to use the symbol that is chomping down on 6-6 six, six to compare these. So we'll use this symbol, and we'll read this from left to right and say 4-6 is less than 6-6. Six, six. So to sum it all up, when comparing fractions with the same denominators, all you gotta do is find the fraction with the greater numerator and pick the symbol that's opening its mouth towards the greater fraction. Thanks for watching, see you next time, peace. All right, so what he just showed us in the video is exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to have a bar model. We're going to partition into equal parts and we're going to label the unit fraction. Notice how each of his parts was labeled with the unit fraction, like one third, or then later he showed one six. We're going to label each part with the unit fraction, and then we're gonna do our shading to compare and see which one has more area shaded. On Seesaw, please find your task with me. Yes. You may go to activities, assign to class folder, 
And we're working in our math, our blue folder. Today is our last day where we're going to compare fractions with the same denominator. Tomorrow, we're going to start switching it to when the numerators are the same. Yes, Kaylee? Not during lessons. We just had a break time. All right, let's go ahead and get into our task, please. Please open. Click add response. And on slide number one, we're going to see an example of how we can partition, label the unit fraction, and shade to represent a fraction. I'm going to play the video. Students are looking at the example, listening to the example, and then we'll do slide two together. Today we are going to compare two fractions with the same denominator by representing these fractions using a model. Our task tells us to compare two one-thirds and one one-third. So notice that I have two models because I'm going to show one fraction here and another fraction here. Notice also that my two fraction models are the same size. When we compare fractions, it's really important that we are comparing fractions that have the same size whole. Today, I'm going to show you an example of how we can use a shape to partition, shade, and compare two fractions. Our task says compare two thirds and one third. I notice that my denominator for each is the same and it is three because I am partitioning into thirds. Next, I can partition each model into three equal parts. I have now partitioned both models into thirds or three equal parts. On the left side of my screen, I'm going to represent and show two one-thirds. Remember that each part is called the unit fraction. Each one of these parts is one-third. So if I'm going to represent two-thirds, that means I can shade two one-thirds. One one third plus another one third and when I add those together we know that one third whoa let's try that again one third plus one third is the same thing as two one-thirds. On the left side, I have now represented two-thirds or two one-thirds. Now let's look on the right side of our screen. My task asks me to compare two-thirds and one-third. Remember that each part of the fraction is a unit fraction and on the right, I'm only going to count one of the parts because my fraction says one third. So I can shade one third. There we go. And I have now represented one third using my model. Now comes the job where we compare using greater than, less than, or equal to by looking at the models. I notice that on the left side of my screen, I have two parts that are counted or shaded. I also know that because my numerator tells me how many parts I'm counting. On the right side where I've represented one third, 
I only have one part counted or shaded. This is how I know that two thirds is greater than one third. So now I'm going to select my correct symbol. Two thirds is greater than one third. Okay, we're going to go ahead and go to slide two and work together on slide number two. All right, go ahead to slide two on and let's um, on seesaw and let's work on this together. Who can read aloud? What fractions are we comparing? What does it tell us in the task? I need to see brains that are ready for math. You should not have something else out. Get your brain focused. Alicia, what are we comparing? Six eighths and three eighths. So what is our denominator in this example? Day, what is it? Six. Our denominator is six. Let's look at our fraction word. Six eighths and three eighths. Eight, Woo, good thing we checked. So let's record our denominator together. Both fractions have the same denominator. Can you back up just a little bit, Angela? Thank you, thank you. So we're going to record eight for each denominator. We have two models. On the left, we're going to show six eighths. We're going to represent six one eighths. On the right, we're going to show three one eighths or three eighths. Our next step is to partition into eight equal parts. So let's go ahead and do that together. I'm gonna to start on the left model and I'm gonna start by partitioning in half. I have two equal parts now. Then I can partition these into fourths or quarters. Now I have four equal parts. And now I can take each one fourth and I can partition it into two. Two times four is eight. So partition this in half. Then I'm going to count to make sure I have eight equal parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. Count yours, make sure you have eight equal parts. Gonna do the same thing on my right model. Going to partition into eight equal parts. Start with halves, then one fourth, then one eighth. And count, do you have eight equal parts? Did you partition into eight? Go ahead and check your models now, please. You have one minute to finish partition. This meeting is being recorded. After we partition, we're going to label each unit fraction. If our denominator is eight, that means it's one eight. A unit fraction always has a numerator of one because it's talking about one part out of the fraction. So take a minute to go through and label each part on your models, on both models. I want you to label your unit fraction and continue on. Go ahead and take one minute to label both models with your unit fractions. Being okay, after we have labeled, the next step is to think about what our numerators ask us to do. In my numerators, I'm comparing six one eighths. So you can use the highlight tool and you can pick any color you would like. And we're going to count six one eighths. We're going to shade that on the left side. So one eighth, two one eighths. 
three one eighths, four one eighths, five one eighths, and six one eighths. I have shown, I have represented six one eighths on the left side of my screen. On the right, it says to compare it to three one eighths. I'm going to choose a different color. And now I'm going to count three unit fractions one eighth, two one eighths, three one eighths. I have now shown or represented three one eighths. It's now your turn to check. Have you represented by coloring or shading six one eighths, three one eighths? Check that your model is correct. All right, the last two jobs are to compare and explain how you know. I see that six one eighths is greater then three one eighths. My next step is to type or record and explain how do you know? I know that six eighths is greater than three eighths because there are more parts shaded in six eighths. Think about what my example is. I'm using fraction vocabulary. I know that six eighths is greater than three eighths because there are more parts shaded in six eighths. We use math vocabulary when we give an example. We don't say things like the picture shows it or I counted. Use your vocabulary to explain how you know. Go ahead and do that now, please, on slide two. Next job. The next few minutes, I want you to watch the video on slide number three and do slide number four. See how they're both circle models? You can start slide four right now if you want to and then watch the video to check your work or you can start with the video and then go show your work. So two jobs right now to do by yourself. Watch the video on slide three and show your knowledge on slide four. Let's do that. You have about five minutes to watch the video and show your knowledge. Yes. There's only two options. All right, go ahead. Five minutes to watch number three. Do number four. Here. Awesome job showing your work on slide number four. Starting on slide number five is the independent work for today. You're going to do the exact same thing by partitioning, comparing, and explaining how you know for each problem. That is your task for today. Friends on Zoom, I will be on at 1245 if you have questions. I will be on to take your questions then. When you get done with today's task, you can check out this tool on site 11. It's kind of fun. It helps you build fractions. I do not think and then you can build them, okay? That is your task for today. I'm going to go ahead and end the Zoom and I will see you at 1245 if you have questions.